So here we go. So why did the Israelites do genocide, a mass murder? Do you believe in the Bible? What is he saying? What are you saying? Talk to me. Don't talk about me. Talk to me. It's a good question. It's a very good question. Because the Israelites, they killed a lot of people. Why did they do it? Can I answer that? So, first of all, I'll say, why do you think the Israelites killed the people? Why? Why do you think? But, but why, do, why do you think they did it? No, no. So I'll tell you why. Okay. So here we go. Deuteronomy 7 verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land with about going to possess it and have cast out many nations before me, the Hittites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mighty than thou. The Bible says when the Israelites have to go to the promised land to inherit the land, there's going to be seven nations there that are more strong than Israel. And they have more people than the Israelites. So here's what God says. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver me, deliver them before me, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show unto them. Show mercy unto them. So God said to the Israelites, yeah, you guys need to kill all of the other nations. Now you said, thou shalt not kill. So why the Israelites kill? Love your neighbor, right? So, who is a neighbor, right? Who is your neighbor according to the Bible? Everyone is your neighbor. So, so let's see if that's what the Bible says, yeah? So this is Leviticus 19 and verse 16. Or actually, no, Leviticus 16. I guess you don't want to hear the answer then. All right. Yeah, I'm going to bring it out the same way. Leviticus 16. And let's see where we are. Alright, as in Leviticus 19 and verse 18 says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself, I am the Lord. So your neighbour is the people that are of your own race. The Bible says you can't have a grudge against your neighbour, and it says thy people. So your neighbour is your own people. You get me? So the Israelites weren't hating their neighbour by killing these pagans. Yeah? Now here's the reason why. Like, let me ask you a question. So you know, like most I said, thou shalt not kill. Then the most I know the Israelites will kill all of the Canaanites. Does that not violate thou shalt not kill? Yes and no. Because we both know why. Yeah, yeah, let me just put his camera on here. Right, yeah, go on. Yeah, I'm saying you also have to understand why some people might look at it and be like hypocrites. Because you can't tell people not to kill, then you kill. Alright. You can't tell people not to rape, but then you end up raping. Yo, 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 my brother, come here. Come here one sec, where you going? You can't ask a question from the way, check this out. Here's the answer, I hear what you're saying. People can perceive it as a That's what I'm saying, that's what people say. I say, I hear what you're saying, people may perceive as people. People may perceive as hypocrisy. But here's how it's not hypocrisy. Because the Israelites were commanded, thou shalt not kill, you shall not kill, but God can kill. Now check this out. This is the book of um, Psalm 149. And before I read that, I'm going to read Deuteronomy. Okay, but hold on, hold on. Before you get that, yeah? Go on. Who's doing the killing? Um, if we are on the battlefield right now, and we both got swords, and we do whatever, who's doing the killing? Okay, let me answer that. Let me answer that, yeah? Check this out. Deuteronomy. 
chapter 32 and verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So God ultimately is the one that kills. And then check this out. Here's what the Israelites will be when sanctioned to by the Lord. Here's why. Psalm 149 and verse 7. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. So the Israelites, when we kill in the name of the Lord, yeah, that is the Lord killing, we are executing God's vengeance. Because Israelites, when we're in righteousness, we can kill, we can kill as the most highest instrument of vengeance. And here's a prime example, us killing the Canaanites and other people, and here's a clear scripture that details that. Well, you do know, you, you do know, for example, it says, yeah, the Go Canaanite on. was peaceable. Peaceable people. Peaceable. He was peaceable. Let me, okay, let me respond to that. Okay, he was, he was peaceable. Can you show me? Can, can you show me that scripture? It's in there. It's in there. I can, I can Google it over here. Yeah, bring that scripture because I, I don't believe that that's a scripture. So check this out, yeah. So now this is the book of um, Jeremiah, and I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 19, yeah. And it reads, The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance, the Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. What is Israel? What is it? Huh? What does the Bible say Israel is? No, let me think. Listen, listen to this, listen to this. Thou art my battle axe and weapon of war. What are the Israelites and like weapon of war? God's weapon of war, right? Let's see. It says, For with thee will I break in pieces the nations. So with Israel, what will the Lord do? Break the nations. So God is saying he's going to kill the nations. Who's killed the nations? Who's breaking them in pieces? The Most High is. He said, I will. But with the Israelites. So the Israelites, when the Most High said, Thou shalt not kill, he was saying we can't kill of our own accord. You cannot kill. The Most High can kill. And when we kill to the Most High, that doesn't, that's not attributed as us committing murder or killing. That is the Most High's vengeance executed at the hand of his battle axe, Israel. And it says, and with me will I destroy kingdoms. So God uses Israel as an extension of his own killing power. It's not us killing, and we do it for the Lord. You do understand why so you understand why some people who get into trouble with God. Well the Bible says this. Check this out. Well the Bible says many things. The Bible says uh, donkeys can talk and people can not make all the things. Now the reason why the reason why some people may perceive it that way, bro, is because of this, yeah? There's no connection here, see what I'm saying? There's no connection. Alright, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 says, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of what these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also for other scriptures unto their own description. So it's saying people that are unlearned, they misinterpret the Bible, they think it's a contradiction. God just said, Vash not killed, because they contradict themselves in the same book. Clearly not. Okay, one question, yeah? And, and finally, let me, before you answer that question, I'm going to prove the Canaanites weren't peaceable. I'm going to show the reason why God killed them people real quick. It's there. It's there. Right. Bear in mind when it says Canaanites, there's different nations within the Canaanites. It's Canaanites, Hittites, Gergeshites, all of them. There you go. So. Yo, bro, come here real quick. This is a dodgy spot around here, bro. Shady spot, man. Why do I always catch you around here? Brother, I'm here chilling, man. You're not moving shady, are you? Huh? Not moving shady, are you? Brother, I'm chilling, man. Alright, check this out, yeah? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12. That's like asking Christ, were you doing in a whole house, Christ? Well, he wasn't in a whole house. <laughs> what, he wasn't, come on. He never went to no whole house. No, don't say that. So he, was, he, he wasn't there? He no, was he never went. He, the prostitutes came around him to ask to follow him, ask for forgiveness. He didn't go into a whole house, though. Oh, but I didn't say he went there to do anything. He was inside a whole house trying to preach the people. There's not a scripture that says that. There's not a single scripture that says that. So you never went you into a Listen, you may say you don't know about the scripture. Don't say the reason. There isn't. Well, not, not, not in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Not in the Gospels. You get me? Alright. 
And then what my question is this, yeah? Before you answer that, here we go. I know, I said, Wisdom of Solomon, check this out real quick. 12. It says, verse 2, verse 3 says, For it was by will to destroy by the hands of our fathers both those old inhabitants of the Holy Land. Check it out, bro. It so God is the one that destroyed the old inhabitants, but at the hands of Israel, right? And why did he do it? Why was it his will? He says, whom thou hatest, so God hated all of those nations, the Canaanites, etc. Why did he hate them? For doing most odious works of witchcraft and wicked sacrifices, and also those merciless murders of children and devourers of man's flesh and the feasts of blood. So because they sacrificed their children, because they were doing witchcraft, God hated those seven nations and used the Israelites to judge them and kill them for it. So that's why he killed them. So the Canaanites weren't peaceful. They were child sacrifices. What's your point? We know, we know what the Canaanites were doing. But let me, let me hold All on, right, hold then. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go, bro. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. We also have to understand that the Israelites were doing the same thing when they were worshipping El. When they were worshipping El, they were doing exactly the same thing. They were sacrificing to El, to Baal. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm. So, so, so for you to say only the king and the king was doing that because that's what they were destroying, it's a bit hypocritical because it's a bit hypocritical because, because, because the Israelites are exactly the same thing. But that's not my main point. My point is this, yeah? My point is this, yeah? Why would the Almighty God Almighty, that can create out of nothing, right? Out of nothing, he can do anything he wants possible that our mind can imagine. Why would he need to use you and I to go and take out his own creation? Why when would he do Yeah, when he can, he can click his finger or blink his eyes or even have a thought of it and the Canaanites are gone. That's my first question. My second question is this, yeah? Why would the most time ask the children of Israel to go kill a whole different people that don't have a problem with him? They don't have a covenant, the Canaanites don't have a covenant. Say that again, say that again. The Canaanites don't have a covenant with the most time. They don't have to keep no laws, they don't have to keep no commandments. Yeah. They can pretty much do as they, as they wish, basically, right? It's only you, it's only me and you that are obliged to, to, to lead according to laws and commandments, right? This other nation don't have, that's what they call heathens, yeah. right? So why would the most time then ask these children to go and destroy the same people that it doesn't have a covenant with, right? And it's a, why don't just give them a brand new land and no one leaves? Give them a brand new land where there's no heathens, there's no, there's no uh, way of you getting, uh, you getting, uh, falling in love with them, like what Israel did, falling in love with the Canaanites, marrying them, falling in love with their gods and their deities and their customs. Why not give your brand new land power for that? Yes. Okay, good question, right? The first answer, right? Why would the why would the Most High raise up a nation to execute his vengeance when right? rather himself? than just killing the people himself, himself right? Yeah, yeah. So here's the reason for that, yeah. Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9, yeah. Because he did it during the Exodus. The Exodus, he said the angel of death, right? Through the Exodus. Yeah. He said the angel of death to kill the first one. Yeah, right. Yeah. So why do you not do the same thing? So here's the reason why, yeah. Um, second one of 16 and 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. So God's will is that he's looking, his eyes are running throughout the earth to look for someone whose heart has perfect faith in him. So that the Most High can use that person as an example of the power that God can give when you have perfect faith in him. So God used Israel yeah, as an example of a faithful people to him and the people that could show the whole world the benefits of serving God is that God can give you that power to overcome your enemies. For, for example, let me we'll show one more scripture to back that up, right? Because if God just did it himself, he would have no living witness or testimony. Yeah, right. He would have no people to think, oh well, we can see that if you follow God, those people are a living example. We just think, oh God would just kill you. So we were a living example to everyone else to show that faithfulness in God gives you something that is beyond comprehension on a human level. 
You get me? And let me finish, let me read that scripture one more time then. Um, Second Chronicles 16 and 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. Most times show himself strong. How do you want to do it? By just killing people of his of himself, which he can do. How does he want to show himself strong? He says this. In the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. He wants to show his strength, the power of him extending his strength to mankind. Okay? Hearing thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth I shall have wars. Is that a sufficient answer for you? Is that a sufficient answer for you? Based on the Bible, what you read, I can understand, I understand that. That's not a problem. Alright, so what's the other question again? The other question was this, yeah? The other question was this. You asked me it loud, but I can't pick it up. The other, my, my, other, my other question is this, yeah? Once again, yeah, like I said before, right? God is all knowing, right? All knowing everything. Yeah. So you said he's done all of that because he wanted to use Israel to be that like the beacon, the beacon of his, uh, of his will, of his, of his, um, of his light. I guess. What did Christ say? He said, "You guys are a light on top of a hill." Right. So do your okay. good works that men can glorify okay. God. All right. Okay. 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 Matthew finish. five. But at the same time, you also know that the same nation gonna fail him. Yeah. The same nation gonna fail.